Hey, are you enjoying this show here on the Sorgatron Media Network? Uh, straight from Pittsburgh, PA. Did you know there's a bunch of other videos coming from Pittsburgh and there's one source where you can find everything Pittsburgh based so you can represent the Steel City and see people who do represent the Steel City. Go to our friends over at pittsburghonvideo.org, a big aggregator of these, this great stuff coming from the Steel City on video to you wherever you are around the world. That's pittsburghonvideo.org. Go check it out. Hey guys, this week on AwesomeCast, we've got new announcements talking all the new stuff from Microsoft, Yahoo, and Google I.O. What's cool? What's the, kind of a flop? And what else is new? Uh, AwesomeCast. Awesome Cast 150, Mike Sword here in the studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, ready to get geeky with you here. Uh, with me back in the studio from his week hiatus is Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com. Chachi says on Twitters. Yes. Yes. I am on Twitter. Happy Twitter birthday. Happy Twitter birthday for you. How'd you find out? Uh, oh, there's a thing that you can sign up for. Um, hold on. It is right, uh, TW birthday at TW birthday. You sign up, and at midnight on your Twitter birthday, they send you a tweet with a link. Um, congratulations, you were my godfather. I'm your godfather on Twitter. Yes. Okay. Um, what does what does that entail? Uh, that means you got me on Twitter. Oh. Okay. Or that I was the first person that I you were the first person I followed. Oh. Okay. So. Yeah, it, it's my sixth Twitter birthday. There you go. Yes. Um, and of course, this is uh, the awesome cast uh, where we we talk nerd. You know, we're going to talk nerd, Trashy. Yes, only nerd speak, and that's it. Nerd. Uh, nerd. You can uh, drop us a line, send us your comments for our contact at awesomecast.com, Google Plus, Facebook, and uh, at awesomecast. Uh, there's been a few people feeding us some stories actually this week that we're going to be getting into. Uh, so we'll touch base with that here in a little bit. Uh, but in the meantime, Chachi, do you have an awesome thing of the week? I do have an awesome thing of the week, Sorg. Thank you for asking. What do you got? Well, on top of uh, the Xbox uh, One being announced today, okay, um, and we'll get to that later. Um, it, it, you know those moving uh, short little images uh, that are popular on the internet to uh, depict funny things such as dancing babies? I believe they're called GIFs, Chachi. You're wrong! Um, the creator of the GIF... What? Uh, recently won a Webby Award, uh, a Lifetime a Webby Award, uh, for his contribution to the internet with his GIF. Uh, among uh, tons of things that he had to say, um, as with what he's been doing recently and whatnot, um, the final comment he made was that the Oxford English Dictionary accepts bo both pronunciations. However, they are wrong. It is a soft G pronounced GIF, end of story. Wow. And now the internet is in an uproar uh, between people refusing to call it that because um, it sounds like peanut Why butter. Why didn't he come out earlier? Was this like, really? And how long has the GIF been around <laughs> that this is the first opportunity he's had to speak out on it? He's had tons of opportunities, but... Come on. The greatest joke the dude played on the internet was what, letting everyone He's, pronounce his creation so, wrong. So he just trolled everybody. Yeah. Basically. Sure did. Way to go. Uh, and then I lose video. Yeah, I was going to say. So, okay, we're back. Hey! <laughs> that's my awesome thing. Sorry, I pulled the thing. I pulled the thing. Um, <laughs> Choosy web designers choose GIF. Ah. Uh, <laughs> So I just realized I have like some stuff here that was hiding behind the title. We'll just put that back up. No, nobody will, uh, will know. Nope, no one um, will notice. So, <laughs> anyways, uh, so my awesome thing of the week this week, um, you know, we're yeah, you know, Google Glass. I've been keeping an eye on. I'm hoping I can get mine here in the uh, next few weeks. They tweeted me last week. Did they? Project Glass. What did they say? said? Hey, you know, just kind of like, hey, a reminder, it's still coming. We're uh, still, you know, just look out for your DM. It's going to be coming as soon as it's, you know we can possibly get it out. Um, so then they responded to a conversation I had probably a week before with Chilla, actually, who was on the show last week. 
Um, because I was like, you know, kind of going on about like, okay, I don't want to get a tethering plan for my phone in order to do the, you know, whatever you have to do to make it work. Uh, can I just get a Nexus, you know, seven inch tablet and work there? And they picked up on that. And I said, like, if this, I, I guess I made a comment of if this is actually a real thing. And they, they and I saw they were kind of responding to those kinds of comments over the last couple of weeks. So just say, hey, we are a real thing and you are getting a class and that kind of thing. So I mean, you know, presuming I pay for it, I guess. Um, so I don't know. That, that was interesting. But, but anyways, in the meantime, so I mean, we're kind of seeing uh, it's getting people's hands. We're, we're kind of finding out what it does and doesn't do yet. Um, Google I.O., which we'll get into a little bit more here in a minute. Um, uh, you know, there's they're, they're talking about best practices with these developers. There's more things being announced. Uh, and this is going to be slow and steady, right? Uh, in the meantime, there's a, a somebody else uh, called do do do. If you go to playgroundinc.com, this video we found uh, uh, thanks to Kota Kotaku, Kotaku. But there's a pretty cool concept video they put together. Uh, it says uh, what we could do with uh, glass, and there's some pretty cool stuff. Like they, uh, for those on audio, we're uh, actually watching the video here uh you know stuff like you see the bike path while you're biking uh changing a meeting as they go through here and they they, they actually just kind of go through several concepts here um he gets a latte and you you, you kind of use your starbucks app and, you, and it it pops up the, you know how much you just paid for that uh at, at the coffee shop um different things like in a little bit here he goes grocery shopping you can get your balance uh, for your, for your uh, uh, bank account, uh, the idea of scanning a UPC and having a <laughs> having a pop up, uh, you know, the average price price checking right there. Um, some pretty cool kind of uh, uh, you know recognition kind of deals. Uh, there's one in here where he goes grocery shopping. I think it's the next one, uh, and keeping that running tally as you're shopping is pretty cool. Uh, popping up a Fitbit. The more and more I saw this, Josh, we, we mentioned a little bit before the, the show, like, it's, this feels like Terminator goes grocery shopping. Yeah. I still want it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I can't put a screen in my arm, mm -hmm. this is probably the next best thing. Yeah. Or, I mean, it's not the next best thing. It'll be a closer thing to putting a, a, a reaction screen in my arm like just to have this idea that this is just like up there and you have this information uh and, and it's kind of not you know in the way and it's helpful kind of stuff uh i think it's pretty cool like oh here <laughs> they pull up like a fitbit kind of app and you take the stairs while you're going in the subway like that's kind of fun too and there's a sequence here where like he finds his like father or something and they actually calls 911 through him there's somebody on a like a hangout which I don't think that's happening anytime soon. Uh, but then he pulls up like instructions for CPR. Huh. That's awesome. That's like exactly what you need to do. Like <laughs> I, I, and this is cool where he's playing guitar and is actually showing all the, how to make a G major and everything like that. Um, like it looks like it's just kind of lessons. It's not even, I mean, it's showing them how to make the chord and telling them if you played it right. Oh, this is fun. The one where they're uh, at dinner and the, you see the score pop up and he celebrates. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the new like bad etiquette right oh man <laughs> of course and then you just saw the uh i want the hud in the my call, eye the call of duty hud in your eye there you go yeah. so i mean some pretty cool ideas um so uh i don't know what do, what do you think how long do you think it's going to take for us to get to something like this a Josh? very long time a very long time i mean there's a lot of hurdles to get through on this thing uh, yeah i mean is it that's so many apps yeah so many apps but so, i mean they're all they're kind of getting to it already because you know you're seeing um you know uh a lot of these are are um like kind of based on like what google now does already right right where it's taking that information have you played you do you have google now i keep forgetting you I do, do have have you yeah. played with it a, a much yeah. more since i started talking i'm loving it on my iphone it's not doing too much yet but the idea that I pull it up and it's like, oh, yeah, here's your, all your tracking numbers for all the uh, Amazon stuff you bought. Here's all of this stuff. Here's the weather. Here's the pens game. Um, the hey, one I am hey, are digging. you going home? This is how long it takes to get home. Like, it's all right there. Uh, the one I am digging is the new Hangout app. Okay. Uh, that's the one that I, I am stuck on. Okay. Um, uh, I love it. Now, if you post something to me. Yeah. 
in Google Plus. Yeah. It's in the Hangout app. It's and I like how it feels. Um, yep. in the app, I download the app to my phone. I actually can't put it on my iPad because it requires you having a front facing camera. Mm -hmm. And I just have the iPad one still. Um, yeah, we, we were saying this is, this is replacing, uh, text between the two of us, right? Yeah, if I need to get in touch with you, I know you'll answer the, 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 uh, hangout app just exactly. as quick. Exactly. And you know that, it, it, and I'm not just tethered to my computer when we do that. Right. So I, it's right there. I mean, it's really, uh, and it also, it seems to, um, it seems to uh, kind of do, for my communication with you at least, what happens with my iMessaging uh, with my wife. Right. Because, like, she messages me, and I have it, you know, tied into my, my uh, you know, my Macs and everything around the house. And whenever she sends me a message, it literally pops up on the computer, the laptop, and my phone, all pretty much in tandem. So I'm getting it. I'm getting that, hey, somebody important sent you a message. And those are really normally the only people who are sending me through iMessage, right? Like like her or my mother or something like that. I mean, most of my family are on iPhones at this point. Uh, and then, you know, same thing with you and other people that I talk with on on uh, Google. Um, I like the integration they're doing in Google Plus with Hangout. Like that whole kind of... Now, if you play with the app or you, you just like your communication with me through Gchat. Just the communication with you through Gchat. Okay. But um, actually, you should get in there. Like, go into, like, like Google Plus and start using it. Or grab your app uh, if they've rolled that out to you yet. Um, yeah, updated to but that. the aesthetics are a lot different. Um, and it, it's, 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 again, like, Google's kind of stepping up and being prettier than anything Apple's putting out. So, um and also, like, Google Plus. Have you shown, you you've been posting stuff on Google Plus? How have you been liking uh, that redesign? Um, I do it from the website. I you don't, do it from the website. Yeah, I, don't actually, <laughs> I don't actually go on there. Okay, but uh, Google Plus is looking pretty here, cool. Here, I'll pull it up. What mine looks like now. I, I, this is like my yearly. Oh, hey, I'm going to start using Google Plus again, kind of thing. Hmm. Um, but I really like what they're doing with it right now uh, because they're. they're everything's a card, you know? Uh, it's got that Pinterest thing. There's no more dead white space going on. This is all the Hangouts, you know, in the side. There's, there's the ones I actually set up on a, the other computers over here getting ready for Let's Play. And and that whole idea now, if we're on the app, like I know uh, AJ and somebody else uh, was actually joining us in the chat that was connected to the Hangout and not actually having to go into a video call. Um, but generally, like, this idea of, of, you know, everything being integrated, there's no waste of space, I'm not, like, waiting for the next card to pop up. And if there is something, my communities are nicely uh, integrated in here. Um, and there was... Let me see if I can find one that does it. Um, but, they're, like, some of these will pop up, and they're like the cards that you'll see on uh, the Google Now. Let's see if I can find one. Usually they're events or something like that, or maybe there's these guys with the communities. Um... And then, and then and then they bring up suggested stuff like every so often. Again, just kind of integrated on the side, not being ignored. It, it's pretty nice. Like and it's got it's got that that it's got that never ending kind of feel like you get with Pinterest that always gets me in trouble whenever I do go on to Pinterest. So um so I, I mean you think it's enough for people to kind of get into it? Google Plus? Yeah. Probably not. Probably not. It's, it's still the same problems. Yeah, it, it's not Facebook and it's not Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, it's just another one of those sites that people don't want to use. It was, or just don't have any reason to. Right. I, I, I mean, there'll come a time where Google forces them to use it. Yeah. But until then, no. But more and more with the integration, we're seeing like what YouTube's been doing the last few weeks with the new channels, which I'm still trying to wrap my head around what's the best way to present in them. I haven't turned it on for all of my all of my channels yet. Um, the biggest killer is how big of a picture they require. It's something like 2,000 pixels across and 1,000 up or something like that. Yeah, I and, tried and, to and use... The best pictures I want to use are Instagrams, and they're nowhere near that. I tried to use uh, the the Chachi says .net banner. Yeah. It wouldn't let me. Yeah, every, everything we're using, because they're all web graphics, but they want this giant thing at the top. I, I haven't even upgraded my profile one. I think... Now, AwesomeCast isn't uploaded yet. Um, I can't even think of one that I've set up properly. Um, you know, actually, I had this one client where I used one a picture for them. Let's see if I can pull it up here. And it, I don't know. It just seems like it's too much. So if it loads up here, there you go. 
and it, you see like just the bottom piece of it and then there this is like a 15 inch uh macbook and it's taking up the whole damn screen right. you know uh, i i don't know it just it just seems like it's kind of overbearing at this point you know and it's not like you need that resolution for you know when you're on your phone so but um also, out of Google I.O., uh, again, Chuck, I don't know how much you've been paying attention to it. Uh, I didn't have time to check out Google I.O. Yeah. Um, last week. I was, it was a busy work week. Um, everything was breaking. Well, some of the stuff, uh, one of the cool things coming up, and this is actually in the beta of Chrome, I guess, right now. Uh, and so we, we don't have it yet uh, if you just have regular Chrome on, on your computer. Uh, but the idea, you know, there's been a voice search on there for a while, right? Right. And now you can just, without pushing a button, apparently say, OK, Google. And start a search, according to the Verge. So where is this? This is on the Google homepage. Oh, again in the beta version of Chrome. Hmm. So, but then there's that idea of okay, does that mean Google your Chrome browser is always listening to you? <laughs> you know, and we'll get into this a little bit with with some something else that's like a little bit persistent. Uh, you know that that whole privacy idea. You know that will you know that idea that anybody can turn your microphone on at any point. Hey, huh. welcome to the future. There's no such thing as privacy. But to the point where, like, the devices are, that would be recording your voice and your visions would be on, like, whenever. Like, we're obviously doing it here where, you know, you expect it maybe on that front page. And maybe it's not recording you, but it's always listening for you. So, but either way, it's still a pretty cool thing. I mean, yeah. it's something that you already do with your phone with Google now. Um... And also, um, they added some pretty interesting uh, Game Center uh, kind of stuff. Oh, they call it Google Games. Um, it lets you play across iPhone, Android, and iPad. They, they showed an example of a racing game that actually just interfaced between several devices. Um, but and it, like I said, this is going to be iOS as well. So again, not being completely Android, uh, Google just kind of, uh, you know, they just want everybody to be involved with it. Um, you, you think this will be something that uh, you know can kind of pick up over Game Center? One more time, I'm sorry. I was reading the do, chat do you room. think do you think this is going to be something that'll pick up over Game Center, like because it's cross compatible with Android and? I hope so. I, like, could this be like the Xbox Live for mobile at this point? It should. Or is this going to be? But my problem is, it could be like another like okay, we have Open Faint and we have these other services. Yeah, but and, those other services suck. They suck, and they kind of got replaced when Game Center came through, right? right. Uh, it, like, we need one one game component to rule them all. Mm -hmm. That way, I can show you how badass I am at Jetpack Joyride and completely <laughs> crush your high scores. And even that idea, like you know, as it is, you know, I have a few games that are online playable. We have some, I have some Street Fighter games and stuff like that. But that they could be cross compatible. Like I could play you in a game at this point, right? You know, which that'd be like an Xbox Call of Duty playing a PlayStation Call of Duty, right? Which will never, which would happen. be awesome if yeah. they, but if they did that on this kind of platform with those kinds of games, that could be cool. It would could require play. cooperation between the two, and it will never. Happen. No, it has nothing to do. It has nothing to do with Apple at this point. It's just a protocol that they can use in the games. I, I don't, and I don't see if they're not if they're not uh, outlawing something like Open Faith, they're not going to outlaw something like a a Google Play protocol that's going to make the games talk to each other. I don't see it happening. No? No. Well, it was still a pretty cool tech demo uh, right off the bat. So, um, Chachi, have you been here about Tumblr? Yeah, they were bought. They were bought. Uh, uh, Gary V was extremely happy about it. Was he? Well, he was an investor. Oh, okay. So of course he was <laughs> happy about it. So uh, Someone asked him if, uh, or if he thought that Yahoo should pay more money for it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, as an investor, I can't really comment on that. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, he didn't want to be a dick yeah. and, and be like, yes, they should pay more, so I get more. But, yeah, you know. Bobby Cherry actually tweeted the uh, the Tumblr letter that, that went out, uh, went up yesterday. Uh, he said, yeah, so David is the, uh, David's pretty, you can see it here probably, uh, F yeah, David at the, at the bottom of the news <laughs> of the acquisition. Of course, he's happy. He's just, he's just been acquired for $1.1 billion. Yeah. Billion dollars. Uh, so, 
and then on top of that, Yahoo's been making moves. Of course, you know, we've been talking about like the video stuff they've been doing lately. Um, they're, they unveiled uh, the new pin, or not Pinterest, Flickr. Flickr's finally got an upgrade. It look, doesn't look like it's from 2000 anymore, <laughs> um, which is including... Flickr didn't really need an upgrade, though. Yeah, well, really? Compared to everything else? I mean, it's looked so dated for Did so long. Did it work? Long. Did it work? Yeah. Kind of? It's I, there. I don't use Flickr. It was just kind of left, though. Yeah. Like, it was just left behind when there's so many, like... I mean, when you got stuff like what Facebook and Google are doing, where you can just automatically upload your photos and start sorting them, half of the stuff that you they had from Google Plus last week was photo enhancement stuff. They'll actually go through your photos and pick the highlights for you <laughs> of your roll of photos from an event. Like, and enhancement options, as pretty much they've replaced Picasso. Um, but, I mean, the new the new Flickr, uh, it, it's more kind of that tiled thing, you know, the, the you know, the, 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 the images in the background sort of situation. But they're including a terabyte free of storage. Well, that means they win. The, do they? The more storage a site offers for free, mm -hmm. uh, the better off they're going to be, because that's where people that's where people will go. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, let's look at it this way: if a, if a new site comes out for online storage and says, "Hey, if you come over here, we'll give you 1.5 terabytes, absolutely free, no cost ever," would that make you leave Dropbox? Yeah, pretty much. See, pretty much. I mean, the, yeah, like Google's, and Dropbox Google, is something you use on Google's your regular. Google starting to entice me when they keep raising the oh hey, fifteen gigabytes for everybody, but they patched it all in with the Gmail and everything like that. Right. Um, but still, it's 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 sweetening that pot to maybe pull me away from Dropbox. Unfortunately, sure. I'm tied in the Dropbox pretty well because most of my clients are now on it. Right. So but, I mean, but still, one point five get one point five terabytes of yeah. free space. Yeah. Would be enough to make your clients be like oh we're over here there's now no, there's, yeah well that's the thing I, I i and thankfully with the clients i do have i think i am kind of the the you know one pushing them ahead in that and say hey this is what i'm looking and see how easy it is you guys should probably get an account with this too you mm -hmm. know um so you know there's that still got the stuff down here going on so yeah what a 1.5 I, I mean one terabyte is enough to make yeah, anyone I mean, yeah, go i'm anywhere. paying ten dollars a month for well with all the the add-ons uh i have about 130 gigabytes that i have up in the cloud mm. and then they started sucking all my pictures off my iphone which eats into that so why would i suck all my pictures in a dropbox take up that why don't you just ship them over to Flickr? Right. plus i'm also shipping them up to uh facebook and google plus while i'm at it you know why not let's see you know which one works the best and maybe I'll, I'll just eventually you know turn the rest of them off and just go to facebook just go to google plus but for right now i kind of like uh, seeing okay how do i make an album over here how do i share it over here what what is the better way of, of doing this right now you know um I, but i don't know that that's two major things i think um to kind of build up the goodwill with yahoo the, over the last week they, they bought they acquired tumblr of course tumblr uh is not Definitely did not make one point one billion dollars in the last few years. I'm not even exactly sure what they do for advertising. I, I don't frequent Tumblr too often. Do you? Are you on Tumblr a lot? You you used to have the Make Me Giggle one. Yeah, and then it got too much work to find stuff to put on Tumblr. <laughs> really? When Tumblr becomes too much work? Well, I mean, you got to think. At the time, I had Tumblr going. Mm -hmm. um, we just started Insert Coin to begin. Um, we were having issues with Chachi Says. Yeah. Um, and then Chachi Plays is always a, a three or four month process. Yeah. So, I mean, it, combine that with my normal job and coming over here on Tuesday nights, plus all the filming we do. Tumblr's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, my uh, Smurf art one didn't go very long, or my Q Cat. Right. The Q Cat one lasted the longest, though. And a cat just makes a just makes a cameo appearance on every podcast we do down here. Right. So, um, so that kind of took. So over. I mean, it's such a small thing takes up a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yes. But still, I mean, the, the the idea that anybody can go on and do that, it's still got a great uh, a great community over there that now Yahoo kind of has. 
Um, and of course, you're going to have people saying that, oh, I'm out of here. Yahoo owns us now. But it sounds like they're going to be doing with this like they're doing, like Facebook is doing with Instagram. I have not seen any influence of Facebook on Instagram so far, really. Um, and it sounds like Yahoo's going to be pretty hands off as far as that. They say we just wanted to acquire that kind of awesomeness or, and they'll probably start doing some integration one way or another. Um, but I mean, really, how much have they really integrated Flickr at this point? You know, and that was kind of the problem. They never did anything with it. It was like, what? I need a Yahoo account now? Um, and that's what happens with a lot of their services. So, uh, so Yahoo's making moves. I, I think, I think at least like this is the most relevant that we've seen Yahoo in ages yeah. at this point. They're making noise. They're making positive noise. I, I'm interested to check out Flickr. I don't, did they swap it over yet? I, I didn't see. I haven't been. But, you know, I have a lot of stuff on there. I was sharing my Instagram stuff to it, but I, I stopped doing that after a while. Um, yeah, there it is, the new Flickr. And I'm already logged into it. It probably via my Facebook from the looks of things or my MySpace or something like that. And right off the bat, I mean, it looks a little more visual. I got PodCamp stuff. The one I did my 365 project that never made it 365. Already Chris Brogan and I, Justine, are right on the front page. Our friend Jan, Jen's on there, too. She's apparently still using it. So, uh, Rob, hey, check out what Rob's working with. Projector screens. We'll be up here in a second after the boots. Oh, after Chris geez. Brogan. There they are. Nice. There they are. Go, go check out his, uh, I think it was his Instagram. He was putting those on. He's got some cool tech he's working with, as always. But I like this. It's more visual. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel as, as you know, again, the, the, that white space you had with Flickr before, right? right. Like, it just felt like, oh, there's an image and there's stuff over here and what? Um, see what happens when we go into mine. This is my first time setting eyes on it other than a, a, a thumbnail, actually. So, but I mean, it's kind of, it, this is kind of that idea that, that we're starting to like in Google Plus and, and, and Instagram, that feel. It, it, I guess it's them kind of just catching up at this point, but still. Um, I, have, I have random Perkins shots in here. How old is my Flickr set? I'm guessing pretty old. So, um, but there you go. Yahoo making noise. Um, we'll get rid of those guys. Chachi, what up? this was almost my awesome thing of the week, although it's a really stupid idea in the long run. What, is it? what if you rented a DVD and you pop it into your DVD player or Xbox as the case may be. And then after, uh, after, by the time you're done with the movie, your disc smells like pizza. No. No? No. Is it a bad idea? Yes. Well, somebody's doing it. Yeah, I know. I saw and I still don't like it. <laughs> it's Domino's Pizza. So, yeah, there, there's uh, – they're going to make the DVD smell like pepperoni pot. Um, and this is something – this is apparently an experiment they're running. They, they're using popular films like Argo, Dark Knight Rises, and, and Skyfall for the experiment. They're creating custom disc labels here according to The Verge, utilizing them to uh, – out of the box, the labels are going to be rather bland, dark gray, featuring uh, nothing more than the given movie's title. Once they've gone for a spin in your DVD player, where that thermal ink is activated, uh, that's when the marketing magic happens. Uh, and by the time you're done, you're going to be smelling pepperoni pizza. No. No? Absolutely not. This is why you do da digital downloads, right? Yes. I don't want my uh, my devices to smell like pepperoni pizza all the time. <laughs> that usually means there's something wrong with them. Right. Like, who? Who stuffed, who stuffed cheese in the back of my Xbox, right? right? You know? Yeah, I don't want that to happen. Who put a grilled cheese sandwich in my VCR? But, Who's cooking pizza like with a, my DVD they player? They got a full-in demonstration. Is this through a Redbox or something? This is ridiculous. But, it's wow. Like Batman? Wow. Um, well, the other big thing came up today, Chach. What up? Microsoft. Now, I don't want to get much... Take my wallet! <laughs> There you go. Um, now, I don't want to get into the gaming side of this because we're going to be getting into lots of it with Let's Play. Right. Let's just cover the hardware. Yes. Because, I mean, there's like really cool technical stuff happening here. Yes. And we got to see the hardware, first of all. So already, <laughs> in the, in the first 10 minutes of this presentation, Microsoft beat Sony. Yes. By proving that this thing actually exists and having it on stage. Yeah, it's probably a hollow box. 
No, they had to have had a working one on stage. Did they? Yes. Did, oh, wait, because he had that Connect thing. Yeah. That's right. He was using That's it right. on he was stage. using Connect. There was a working one on stage. I don't think we had any, like, working anything at the PlayStation 1. No. Right? No. And it, on top of that, um, Infinity Ward showed behind the scenes and uh, actual, well, not actual footage, but trailers and and uh, images from the, the this game. Is, this is running the game this, engine. This has to exist. Yes. Yes. I mean, there are companies already making this toy their 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 slaves. <laughs> they are they are doing naughty naughty things to this, and it's not fair. Because I could be doing naughty naughty things to this. Uh, they, you know, there's a comment from the chat room. Actually, I should mention real quick. Um, Alex on the on the Flickr story says, "Wait a minute, you want me to pay twice what I've been paying for Pro for less benefits?" <laughs> That's one thing. Because if you uh, what right now, if you pay twenty five dollars a year, you get unlimited storage on Flickr and they're actually trying to backtrack everybody out of that to the one terabyte version yeah. but then they're going to have to pay like I think a whole bunch more to get more than that terabyte if they, they're up to that point so that could be a problem so oh sorry back to the Xbox though you were saying but I, I, I was saying that I could do naughty naughty things to it <laughs> um, so but the interesting technical things like again we're, it, there is going to be that pass through it looks like it's doing what you know basically what Google TV promised where we're going to have that guide. It's going to be integrated. You can actually tag stuff and say, I want to watch episodes of Arrow. Sorg. And, and it'll just bring up where it is. From the technical standpoint. Yes. How smooth was it switching between everything available? I, I believe it when, I, when it works in front of me. They just showed I, you they working. Show, they, that's, that is, no, no, that is a lockdown demo. You don't know there's not a guy in the back with a button every time the guy made a thing. I, I, I'm skeptical on those. If it actually works, really, does the, the connect that you have work as well as you thought it did on stage? The connect? Yeah. I didn't see the connect presentation. But still. Also, the connect was, an, was a later add-on. Okay. This software was created from the beginning. With connect in mind. With connect in mind. Okay. Same with X, with a. Uh, Smart glass. Mm -hmm. Smart glass is going to work 9,000 times better with this because it's a part of the system. It's not a secondary add on. Okay. Okay. Look at all the uh, peripheral devices for the Nintendo. Mm -hmm. How many of those work well? Just in general. Yeah. Exactly. Like, are you. Two? Well, the Wiimote works. No, not the. Not, I'm talking about the regular Nintendo. We're, oh, the regular Nintendo? We're talking about like two? the power pad and stuff. Yeah, two. I, that's the, I don't think that's even a point of software at that point. Like I, that that's that's the idea that uh, you have these devices and you're trying to get people to develop for them, but you have to get people to buy the thing, and nobody buys the thing. I, that, that's just it always been a per peripheral uh, issue. Right. You, know? you got it, people. You got people. You got people bootstrapping Connect features on the Mass Effect Three just because Microsoft's trying to get them to do it to try to sell Connects. That's that doesn't mean anything. And the whole idea, I, you know, this whole well, it's built into the system. It's just the soft. It's just like the software you wrote into the Xbox. You got more power to play with now. Maybe earlier on you have it, but I mean, this is all still similar software. I think in the long run. A lot of that, a lot of the stuff you, I think a lot of the stuff you see in the software of the Xbox One is going to be very similar to what was in the Xbox 360. There's a, I think, I don't think it's as rebuilt as they, they, uh, you know, take it to be. It's just software. No, it's not just software because without the hardware, the software is shit. Now they did improve the, the hardware. Okay. Of it, the Connect. It, it, it is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Okay. Without the peanut butter, the jelly is nothing. Show title. Um, okay, okay. Now, now, okay. Tell me about the peanut butter and jelly uh, jam they did with the uh, OS. This is the most impressive part. Yeah, uh, uh, the OS is. Or, no, I'm sorry, you can't say OS. Uh, the Xbox One runs three concurrent OSs at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, one is the Xbox system. Mm -hmm. One is the. Uh, would they call it the snap in? Oh, hold on, I have it right here. Well, you have the Xbox 360 like software, the actual gaming. The I... host, the host OS. Yeah. Um, the shared partition, 
and the exclusive partition is what they're called. Okay. Um, the host, the host, uh, boots, uh, launches, uh, the other two. Uh, the exclusive is where the programs are, mm-hmm. and the shared is the one that connects everything and allows them to work concurrently. So basically, so basically, you have like the Xbox video game kind of software. Right. You have like they said like a Windows kernel based software, which right. the Windows kernel has always in some way been part of this. Right. Like since the original Xbox. Um, and then in between, you just have this kind of layer so they can speak to each other. And that's what we saw when he goes, like, uh, Xbox, turn on the game. Right. Xbox, change the channel. To Xbox, uh, boot the video game, you know. Which uh, is that... why it's smooth. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. have an entire OS that's dedicated to running these commands. There's an entire part of the system. Now, granted, like, the video stuff really doesn't take that much CPU. Right. That's not where the horsepower is going into. They got plenty to spare, so they could just slice off this little bit over here and say this is where all our video and our Skype calls and our Internet Explorers are going to pop up over here. Right. Right? Um, and then you have this is the main stuff. And we're just going to pause this, slide it over in this little nook, and here you're going to watch your Game of Thrones. Right. So which was smooth. If it works half as good as it showed on screen. That idea that you're watching something, a Skype call, call comes up and you just pin it to the side. Like That's like the promise of their operating system. And it's amazing what that operating system can do when you don't have to support as much hardware. Right. It, isn't it, it, isn't it very... I'm saying well, right it, now... Isn't it very Apple-like in simplicity? The Xbox One? Yeah. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah. Uh, it, this, isn't, this isn't a computer where you can install... Or you can add new hardware and remove new hardware at yeah. will to update your system. This is controlled by them. Therefore, it's going to be some, as simplistic as possible... Because they don't want people taking this crap apart, and that's why that's why I think that's we're, why we're having the problem with Windows Eight, right? right? It's not working. It doesn't work very well on my on my mother in law's laptop. It doesn't have a touch screen. We don't understand it. That whole there's it's going from from a complicated system to a different kind of complicated system. It's not getting simpler and obvious. Where you know, as opposed that we're seeing with iOS and Android, even to this point, right? Right. Um, so it's really like you're. The dream of Windows, at least in this new tiled look, is being represented by Xbox and Windows Phone. And they're still working on that bridging the gap with the operating system. So um, that, it was cool that you could bring up a, a Internet Explorer on the side. Not just Internet Explorer. I mean, everything. Fantasy Leagues during ESPN. Yeah. they they uh, And again, this will all be covered on the next show. Yeah. So if you want to listen to us talk about... Uh, Xbox One for a half hour. Yeah, tune in to uh, Let's Play immediately following this. Um, but uh, they they partnered up with everyone, it seems, on this. Yeah. I mean, everyone's involved. Uh, it, but they already had, you got to think, they already have all those partners that are currently on the Xbox, which is probably the most prolific lineup. It, point, it took right? five screens to show all of the <laughs> the companies that they're partnered with. Exactly, exactly. I mean, and we're not talking like huge pictures of their icons. We're talking like little little pictures of their like, icons. Like what you see when you see like the UFC channel or the Hulu channel yeah. or anything like that. And, and you know, it took five. I mean, just that versus like, you know, Nintendo saying, yeah, we're going to do that too. And they have Hulu, Amazon, and Netflix, and what have you heard since. Right. You know, um, I think they they came out of the gate at the right time saying, look, here's what we got. And uh, you don't have to wait very long to hear what we got next because E3 is in like two weeks. It, 19 days. 19 days. Is so, I mean, from today, you get... All of this stuff that just makes you salivate and throw your wallet at whatever your screen you're watching the presentation on. Yeah. And then uh, 19 days, you're going to get the rest of the details that you want to hear. I'm throwing my wallet. I'm throwing my checkbook. I'm throwing my credit cards. I'm throwing my PayPal account. I'm throwing my Square. I'm this calling, doesn't have NSC yet, I'm, I'm, I'm throw it I'm too. I'm calling BS. What? Because you said you weren't on board. Uh, yo, I, I, not yet. Not yet. Uh, I'm not I'm not putting the, putting aside $500 for we, this thing. We don't know, have, have a thing yet. And we'll talk about this more. And, 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 and the stuff, we, we, we it's, discussed. Got me, it's got me on the toy part, not the gaming side. But the, the, the pure technology, I want to play with this. 
I want to I want to see what the new Xbox or the new Kinect is like. I want to I want to see like the whole idea of the motions and the speech. I want to see if this freaking works the way they say it is, the way they demonstrated it today. Because um, if it does, that just completely transforms your you know it's that promise of transforming your living room finally uh, happening, right? And 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 Sony doesn't have techno again. We're talking te- technology mostly here. Gaming games later, uh, Sony didn't even touch this. Sony has nothing to compare with Kinect or that kind of technology. I don't think they well, have any... in order to combat everyone saying that, in Sony's defense, they did mention that June 10th, uh, they will release all of their information, okay, their so own they, presentation. They, they, so they were doing However, a... However, they were doing a presentation of absolutely nothing to beat Microsoft. I tell you what, you know what they did do? They, well, you know what they did do that's better than everybody else? But they we're did still do, talking about it. What they did do was show games. They showed plenty more games than the Xbox did. No, they didn't. Xbox showed six, seven, eight games today. Okay. All right. I feel like they showed way more on the uh, on the Sony side. Let, let me rephrase that. Xbox showed eight game footages today, yeah. not concept videos. Okay. Okay. Um, Xbox invited. Uh, three of the biggest gaming companies there are. EA, Activision, and... Uh... Uh, 343. Okay. Um, uh, That's right. Uh, oh, were they the ones with that, the Max Payne people or something? Yeah. The Quantum uh, uh, yeah. something? Um, so, I mean, they had EA, uh, they had Activision, and they had uh, 343 there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, they showed game footages. From all three of those companies. Mm -hmm. On top of that, one of the biggest racing franchises in gaming history. Forza, right? Yes. um, Footage was shown. Uh, And then Xbox did something that that Sony can't do. Xbox said they guarantee 15 new exclusive titles within the first year. Eight of which are brand new franchises. That's impressive. New stuff, something different, not just another tumor. That right? means that means there are at least, okay, at the very least, not counting Activision, uh, EA, or three four three. There are at least fifteen other companies out there that already have their hands deep inside the Xbox One. Yeah, there are people already out there programming, debugging, and testing. Using the Xbox One. And what did PlayStation say? PlayStation said, hey, we have an idea for a new system, but we can't quite show it to you yet. Nope. Nope. Now, here's the, now. okay, so aside from that, how do you feel about the idea of uh, you getting a Skype call in the middle of your game? I am on board 100% really? with everything this system wants to do. Okay. Okay. As I said upstairs while I was showing you the the, the release or the, the announced video, if it's available tomorrow at the $100 uh, two-year contract price, mm-hmm. I'm in. 100%. Well, yeah, I'm we on don't board. have pricing yet. Right. So hopefully we get that here at E3 and we'll, we can make a little more solid decision. Um, so... I have faith that this Kinect will be better than the last Kinect, mm-hmm. um, already just from the, the hardware specs alone. Okay. Um, it's a 1080p wide wide which, lens. Which we saw, you know, we kind of see, uh, you know, I know we saw something at Comic-Con a few years ago where, you know, you saw the resolution of that camera and what it actually sees. And they were using it for uh, 3D rigging. Right. Um, so the idea that they, they bumped that up a bit, and they're kind of showing examples, and I don't know how realistic these examples were because they look at kind of rendered things, uh, of what that sees of your frame, how many points of articulation you now have. Because I think you had, like, maybe you had, like, your elbow and your shoulder, and, and that was about it, right? You had head, like, shoulder, now elbow, it's... hand, waist, knee, foot. That's all they had, like, with the current one? With the current one. And you can kind of tell that when you start moving around with that. that it right? shows you. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, it like, shows you the wireframe. Yeah. So it's a more complicated wireframe. It's a little more to it. They said they could take your heartbeat through this thing by looking at you. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Uh, I, 
I'm in. I'm on board. <laughs> uh, if there's, uh, um, yeah. So does this mean, uh, Chachi, we're, we're going to be Skyping you in from your Xbox? I hope not. No. We'll see how that goes. Especially since we're trying to get off Skype. Well, one more one more tech story actually kind of connected to that. And, you know, aside from the idea like, hey, you're going to have an always-on camera looking for you to say something, to turn on your Xbox even. Because then you do that, just said Xbox start or something. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, again, something that's always listening. Well, not necessarily. Uh, you you got to wonder, like, what are they going to do with that? All of these features are most likely disabled. Like yeah. you, you're you're able to disable all of these. Yeah, and I would hope so. I would hope so. So I mean, this is all up to you. But then you can't use all that stuff. So it's that that, that mission of privacy. You know, is that camera really off? Is, does Xbox have a back door that will just open it up? If Who you knows? have if you have a problem with uh, thinking that you're you're not having privacy, yeah, put the technology down. Let's not put the Xbox One in the bedroom. Just yeah. in case. Um, well, Walk away. Well, reason, reason some people might be a little suspicious is actually a story that came out this week The Riz uh, sent over. Uh, and actually, we're, I, ironically, Riz, I was talking with uh, uh, Davitech, Brian Snyder, last night about this very issue. So you know how uh, Windows Messenger has been kind of discontinued. They're saying, hey, everybody just go to Skype, right? right. So pretty much replace it as far as even IMing in the Windows world. Uh, well, it's it's been brought up that uh, uh, Microsoft intercepts, decrypts, and reads your Skype messages. Now, technically, you can you know get into that whole thing, but he did a test, and I thought this is the interesting part. Uh, so they actually sent a link that nobody would know. It was like a test site kind of link that they would have put together. It's on the internet. There's no way anybody could have found this thing, right? Sent it through, pulled the stats on it, way more stats than they thought it was. Now, Skype claims, or Microsoft Skype claims, that this is part of an anti-spam process. That it's going in, going to the link, double-checking on it, checking back out, right? But there's definitely a little bit of a security issue that somebody is touching base and looking through that. Not somebody, something, a crawler, whatever it might be. So how... How how secure are your messages if you're using that? And if you're using that in like a, a corporate environment, that could be a problem, right? It could be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure it's in their terms of service, though. That's true. Uh, I'm pretty. It, uh, I'm not gonna say pretty sure, but it seems like the type of thing that would be covered in their end user license agreement mm-hmm. that no one reads. Um, but I mean it, and even so. On some level, they have a right to have a, a, a spam filter mm-hmm. check the links and uh, messages being sent. And it, let me just state for the record that this isn't a person sitting there clicking on every link that you send. This is a, a computer uh, opening saying, oh, that's clean, and relaying your message. Mm-hmm. And it did, This it- is a completely normal process. My company has two of them. Mm-hmm. And and according to yeah, the, it does say uh, Skype may use automatic scanning and, and uh, for instant messages. Uh, the scare the scary part is that this thing's going to over security and just uh, I think the idea that at some point this is this has to be decrypted down to a point where a human can read it in order for this process to take place. So uh, again, I guess it's t- it depends on what kind of material you're, de- you're dealing with. And again, anytime you use one of these services, it's going over somebody else's servers. You got to put a level of trust in it. it, it th- okay, here's the way I look at it. All right, first off, you're in this technology-filled, amazing, wonderful time in our our history. Mm-hmm. Okay, but. What you're not stopping to realize is that free service that you're using costs somebody a lot of money to run. Mm-hmm. How, if, many, how many servers did they say were running the new Xbox Cloud? 300,000 servers. More server power than was available to the world in 1999. So, okay. <clears throat> yes. Their computers may be clicking your links. Mm-hmm. All right. Very possible thing. And whether their end license agreement says, or end user license agreement says they can or not, ultimately doesn't matter. You want to know why? 
It's their servers. This company has an investment. Yep. An investment that you're you you're using to send porn across uh, the wires or the wrestling mayhem show. Yes. Okay. Very similar. So you're using it for free to send these messages across. Mm-hmm. This company has more than every right to check the crap you're sending to make sure it's not going to screw up yeah, their service. As it is, like half of these, you know, there, there's been a lot of dis- uh, talk about disclosures with Google and Skype, even uh, about you know back doors and how much do they uh, uh, fulfill requests for information that you know that is locked down that they open up to help with investigations. Um, so I mean, it's just it's something to think about. Uh, I, and I think you do too, we kind of live a little bit, you know, wild with our privacy. You know, it just, it's out there. I've accepted the fact that I have no privacy. You've accepted it. We weren't, and how much of my life do I spend on Twitter? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but you're very public and there's nothing you're really hiding. You no, know, I and have if you're nothing texting, to and you hide. Understand, you obviously understand this concept. Right. So it, it, this company is awesome enough. They have the people there who created these amazing services. Mm-hmm. These services that are saving us a lot of money and making everyone live, everyone's lives a lot easier. Which is, okay? which is exactly something that Google was putting over at their thing. They're saying, we're letting technology get out of the way so you can do things exactly but But it costs money yep and if you send a virus unknowingly across their server there's a possibility that that server could shut down Mm -hmm. which would cost them 10 times more than what they were spending to keep it up it's kind of the idea you're allowed to do everything you anything you want in this world as long as you don't bother anybody else well they're going to enforce that on their end um so there you go I don't know why not both house cars. Oh, porn and wrestling. Oh, why not hams? both? Yeah. Well, that that might happen too. Um. So hey, hey. Before I forget, another awesome thing of the week. Yeah. Alex Cars graduated college. Graduated college. Congratulations. As I said before the show, take two weeks off, then get a job. <laughs> the economy needs you. Wait, wait, wait. Are you giving out a college collegiate advice just like on Unsung this week? Yeah. <laughs> This one's coming from me, though. This one's coming from you, though. And Adam Sung will be up uh, later this week, of course. Alex Cars, hey, he, great graphic designer. He's been doing the covers for us for the RWA DVDs. Uh, check out the last couple of months of that. He's got... Uh, remind me again your site, and I'll, I'll plug it for you. Uh, so if you guys are looking for a graphic designer, he's out there in Long Beach, California. Um, I, he works well with me in telecommuting, so uh, that's an option as well. Uh, so there you go. Uh, so, Chachi? I think it's a bit. We covered Microsoft, Yahoo, and Google. There's nothing more. I'm pretty sure we've covered all the major players except for Apple. Apple didn't do anything this week. I know. Except the tax stuff. That's not real awesome. Yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah. not us. It's, it's more like, yeah. It's, <sighs> Those yeah. are two old guys bickering. <laughs> it's probably more than two at this point. Uh, now, we'll be talking about them a lot in the next few weeks, and WWDC comes up, right? So uh, keep an ear out for that. I think that's June. Is that June 10th? They start off that? Hey, no, that can't be right. I think it's a week before that. Um, oh, it is June 10th. It's the same week as E3. That's going to be a nutty week. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, you already know which one I'm paying attention Ooh. to. Yep, we'll see how that goes. Well, hey, Apple here, video game stuff on Let's Play. We got a place for it now, right? Yep. So with that, guys, it's sort uh, again, uh, somebody hire Alex Cars uh, out there in Long Beach. Uh, you can check us, drop us a line at contact at awesomecast.com. We're on Google Plus, Facebook at awesomecast on Twitter. Send us your comments. Let us know if you agree, disagree with us. Uh, and also, thanks for our chat room, Alex Cars, Tony Garza, Bobby FJ Town, and Brother Sorg joining us in there. Thanks for uh, to uh, Riz and uh, uh, Bobby Cherry for uh, their comments they sent in this week on the Twitters as well. I have Sorg's wallet. And Chachi has my wallet. Don't show that. No, it's just to. sad. It's just sad. I'm a sad freelancer. Um, so with that, guys, please drop. Uh, uh, you know, I'm at Swargatron. I'm at Chachi says. Yes, he is. Um, we live so on Twitter. Pretty yeah. much. Uh, yeah. So you can hit us up. That's right. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Awesome. We're getting awesome.